Hello, once again, my name is Olivier, and we are still in hydraulics and the pneumatic system. And today, we are going to deal with electro pneumatics. Remember last time we did with pure pneumatics and we saw some logics like AND, like OR logic. We, we saw direct control and indirect control. So today, we are going to integrate electrical control to pneumatics, which means electrical is going to be the control circuit and the pneumatic is going to be the power circuit, the one to control power circuit. And why, why, why do we have to add uh, electrical system? It's because we need to make it easier. Using, pneum using pneumatics, there's some, uh, some complication, some logic cannot be done, but using electrical system, we can make it easy, and even the maintenance will be easier. So when we say electro pneumatics, we just mean we have pneumatic side and we have electrical side. So with electro pneumatics, we always need to have two separate circuits when drawing, one for electrical side and then another one is the pneumatic side. And always uh, with electrical circuit, we, can, we, can, we, we will have some components from electrical system and some components for pneumatic system. Let me, have, uh, let me write some components here. So as you can see, there is electrical side and there is pneumatic side. So, with electrical components, we will need to have, of course, power source. Power source, it might be AC or DC, like 220 AC voltage, and 12 voltage or 24, 24 voltage. It's the most used is 24 voltage, when in case we, we deal with uh, DC current. Again, we will need protective equipment, protective devices, just like circuit breaker, circuit breaker CB, or fuse. We will also need switching switching elements, push button switch, a push button switch, and you can have like a selector switch, you can use a selector switch, we can use limits, limit switch, and so on. We also have, need to have output elements let's say the solenoid. And this solenoid is located to pneumatic valve. It's the one that controls pneumatic valve. We shall have relay, relay or contactors. Contactors, we can also use PLC. When you say PLC, we just mean programmable logic controller, but this is the advanced one. Of course, we, we will also need uh, like wires. We need also wires. And for pneumatic side, we will need the same, we'll need those main part that we said, which is pressure source. Pressure source. We will also need service unit, also known as F. RL units. You will also need directional directional control valve, also known as DCV. And the directional control valve is the one which is electrically controlled by the solenoid. So it means the connection between electrical and the pneumatic will be done at the directional control valve. We will also need to have actuators, actuators which are single acting cylinder and double acting cylinder. 
or even air motor. So um, coming back to electrical system, when you hear limit switch, you can also understand sensors. And the sensor will, whatever limit switch or sensors, they bring the feedback information to the system, to the control system, which is the electrical system. It means limit switch or sensors might be sensing the location of the actuator so that the feedback information comes back to the directional control valve through solenoid valve. So the types now, the types of control circuit, electro-pneumatic circuit can be done in two ways. There is so-called direct control circuit. And there is indirect control, control circuit. So let's say that in direct control circuit, we just need to have pneumatic circuit here. pneumatic circuit and electrical circuit here. Suppose that we have this port one, port three, port five, port four, port two, this is a five part two DCV, electrically by a solenoid. And this is our solenoid. Let's write down here. Sol, to mean solenoid. So if we need to control this directory, we just need to have power line, let's say 24 voltage and zero voltage as power line. So you can say from here, you go to switch and you go to solenoid. So this is how solenoid is symbolized in electrical circuit. And this is the same solenoid in the pneumatic circuit. So they are connection. When you press on a switch here, the solenoid is energized, which is the same here. Then it changes the position. And this is the direct control. And for indirect control, we can have the same situation. Again, this is port one, port three, port two, port four, and port five. This is the pressure source. So in electro-pneumatic, Type indirect control, this time you will need power circuit, let's say 24 voltage and zero voltage. By this time, we're going to, into, into, to introduce a relay, it's another component. We have to put a switch, then a switch will control the relay. Let's call it R, and that's S. Then the relay, as it, ha it has got internal contact, which is R, is going to control the solenoid. So what happens to indirect control? When you press on switch S, it closes the circuit, and this relay will be energized. When energized, it closes this open contact. This is an open contact for relay. When closed, now the solenoid will be energized, which means this is a direct control whereby there's no relay and this is indirect control where there is a relay and I'm going to show you the relay that I'm talking about and use a relay or you can use a contactor to control in indirect control. So um, hope you have understood the different way of controlling the electro-pneumatics either by using direct control or indirect control. For the next video we will, we will now connect both direct control and indirect control. Thank you very much.